guys, M Tech Guy here, and today we're going to take a look at changing out the SMG hydraulic oil in the E60 M5. Now, this is to be not confused with the SMG gear oil, which I did make a video on some time ago. I'll leave a link at the top of the screen here. No, this is the hydraulic oil for the hydraulic system that looks after the clutch actuation and your shifts, your gear changes. Now there are different ways you can go about doing this hydraulic fluid change but whichever one you use you're going to struggle to get 100% of the old fluid out of there but the process we're going to use today we're going to get the bulk of it out of there and to be fair this hydraulic fluid does hold up pretty well over the years but the car's 18 years old now I imagine it's got the original fluid in there so it's a good time to get this changed out and get things freshened up now we're going to go about it the safest option today we're just going to suck out the old fluid out of the reservoir and refill it with fresh stuff if you wanted to take it a step further from there you could run the pump to get that new fluid through the system then drain it again refill it do the same again do that three times and you'll get about 98 percent of the fluid changed out a bit like when we've done the power steering fluid in the past there's another method that can be used there's a fitting on the bottom of the hydraulic block for the pump which houses a non-return valve now you can back that off slightly and run the pump and drain all the oil out like that but there are risks involved with that process because you don't really want to disrupt the non-return valve you're going to disrupt the seal on the plug for the non-return valve and also if you run that pump and it runs dry you're going to damage the pump so the safest way to go about this is just to suck all the old fluid out of the reservoir refill it with new fluid now to do this job properly we need to be able to communicate with the SMG gearbox so we're going to need a scan tool that's capable of that. Now there are different options out there nowadays whether you use a laptop with a BMW program like IMPA, ISTA or DIS or a dedicated BMW scan tool. There are phone apps available with the Bluetooth OBD tool but I've not used these ones myself in the past so I don't know much about them but today we'll be using a bi-directional scan tool. So we need to be able to communicate with the SMG gearbox to be able to depressurize the system before we suck all the old fluid out of the reservoir. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, M-Tech guy, well that reservoir's not under pressure, so why are we depressurizing it? Well, the SMG system uses a hydraulic accumulator. Okay, so what's an accumulator? Well, it's a cylinder on the side of the gearbox which has two chambers in it, one's filled with nitrogen and it's under pressure and the other side accepts the hydraulic fluid. Now the nitrogen side is there to provide counter pressure against the hydraulic fluid and also act as a buffer. When the pump runs, it'll just smooth it out and take any pulsations out of the system. So in its normal state, the accumulator has a volume of hydraulic fluid in there under pressure, ready to go. So every time the system goes to operate the clutch or you go to change gear, it's not trying to pump up the whole system with the pump to provide pressurized fluid to be able to do that it's all there ready to go in the accumulator so a portion of that fluid out of the reservoir remains in the accumulator under pressure now when we depressurize the system it's going to offload that accumulator back into the reservoir and that's going to give us our true reading and the true reading being the fill line is the bottom of the filler neck so if you approach this job without depressurizing the system first you're not going to get a true reading at the reservoir and then once we have the fluid changed out we're going to go through a bleeding procedure for the clutch actuation system now when we drain the reservoir and refill it there's a chance that we might introduce a small amount of air into the hydraulic system so this bleeding procedure is just going to make sure that we, the whole system's 100 percent bled just in case any air has entered the system so to recap the steps we're going to use today is we're going to depressure the hydraulic system we're going to suck out all the old fluid out of the reservoir and we're going to refill it with new fluid then we're going to run a bleeding procedure and that'll be the bulk of the smg hydraulic fluid changed out all right let's take a look at the hydraulic fluid we're going to be using today all right so the hydraulic fluid that we're going to be using in the smg today is the chf 11s this is the fox brand i bought this from the bmw main dealer now we're going to be using one of these oil transfer syringes here so we're going to use this to suck the old fluid out of the smg reservoir and then we're going to use it to inject the new fluid into the reservoir now this only comes with a short length of hose so what i've done is i've bought some extra hose there because access is quite tight to the smg fluid reservoir so the extra length of hose is just going to make it a little bit easier with regard to pulling the old fluid out of the reservoir and injecting the new fluid into there all right let's get into it okay so to start off with what we'll do is gain access to the fuse box which lives underneath the cabin filter housing here in the tray and then we can locate that smg pump relay so we'll unclip this clip at the front here the box and we've got a nut here that takes a 13 mil socket we're just going to turn that 90 degrees anti-clockwise and this 
filter just lifts up and out. Then we've got three more plastic nuts here. Same again, 13 mil socket, turn it anti-clockwise 90 degrees. I've got a small screw to remove here. This one takes a T25 Torx. You might find yours is a T27, might have been swapped around at some stage. And we're gonna remove this weather strip. This just pulls right off. And we've got this rubber piece here, which we're also gonna remove. And we've got this retainer holding the two halves of the under trays together. So that's just a case of pulling this clip up there and slide it to the left hand side of the car. Then in the center here, holding the two halves of the trays together, there's another one of them plastic locking nuts, which take a 13 mil socket, anti-clockwise 90 degrees to remove. And then this just lifts up and out. So this is the main box here, housing some of the fuses, the relays. So what we can do now is remove this black lid. We've got several bolts to remove here. These take a five mil Allen. Okay, so that's the lid removed from the fuse box now. Now if we take a look right over the back here, this black relay here, that's the one for the SMG pump. So when we get round to it, that's the one that we'll be removing. So now we've got access, so as soon as we're ready, we can pull the relay. Right, so now we've got this scan tool hooked up. We're gonna go down to service, the powertrain, SMG transmission, service functions, exchange and repair, replacement and repair. We're going to go into hydraulics. Then there's an option there before working on the hydraulic system, pressure reduction. So we'll go for that one. And we're going to go reduce hydraulic pressure. We'll go, yes, we would like to reduce the pressure. And there's just a message here telling us that we're going to be prompted to remove that SMG pump relay shortly. You can see the pressure's reducing there at 40 bar at the minute. Right, so now it's telling us we're down to one bar, so that's close enough. Right, so there's that message there telling us to go and remove that SMG relay. And the reason being that the SMG pump might try and cycle on and build that pressure while we're busy working on it, then that's going to mess up our fluid levels. So important that we do remove this relay before we go any further. So that's the relay now removed, so there's no risk that that pump's going to try and run and build up pressure while we're busy changing out the fluid. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna jack up the car so we can gain access to the pump underneath. Now it is important that you make sure the car's nice and level when it's up on jack stands. And if you require any guidance with jacking up one of these E60 M5s, I have made a previous video on this. I'll leave a link at the top of the screen now just to help you guys out. All right, so we've got the car up in the air, nice and level. So if we take a look underneath here, we've now got this under tray just covering the SMG gearbox there. So that'll be the next item to remove. So there's several bolts holding this on. They take an eight mil socket. Okay, so that's the under tray now removed. So now we've got access to our SMG gearbox. This is the reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. Right up there, that's the fill plug. It takes an eight mil Allen. Now this fill plug is made of plastic, so you have to be really careful with it. They do break very easy, especially when you come to refit it so you certainly want to be careful about over torquing it and if you do wreck it you can still get them from bmw but they're super expensive so just take your time with it go careful because you do not want to wreck this plastic fill plug if you can get away with it now this looks relatively clean under here but if you've got any dirt and debris or road grime or whatever it is worth just spraying it all down with some brake clean or something just to clean it down because you need to be careful that we're not going to introduce any contaminants into the hydraulic system okay so our next step is going to be to remove that plug and then we're going to suck out all of that old hydraulic fluid right so we'll remove the fill plug that's not very tight at all that's the fill plug okay so now we're ready to retrieve the old fluid so insert our hose I have actually had to fit a smaller one here, just a smaller diameter to be able to feed it right down to the bottom of the reservoir there. I'll go in now. Okay, 
go in again, take another portion. Make sure the hose is right at the bottom again. You can see there, that fluid still got a bit of a green tinge to it, but it is starting to look a little bit dirty. I'm not sure if this has ever been changed before or whether any of the components of the SMG have been replaced by a previous owner. It's like whenever you buy any car, if there's any uncertainty there about the fluids, it is worth just changing them out. Go in for some more. Push that right to the bottom, make sure we've got everything out of there. Drawing some air through now, so it looks like we're getting to the bottom of it. That's it, it's just slurping now. So now, I'll just drain all this old fluid out the hose and the syringe and then we're ready to put the new fluid in the reservoir. All right, so now we've got our fresh fluid, we're ready to refill the reservoir. So we're gonna fill this right up to the bottom of the fill hole there. That's the correct level when the accumulator's empty and all that fluid is pushed back, depressurized into the reservoir. Now, before I started sucking out the old fluid, I did check the level there and it wasn't quite as high as it should have been. Now, there doesn't appear to be any leaks here. It's in a remarkably clean condition. For this car's nearly 20 years old now. So whether some components have been changed previously and this hasn't been filled up to the correct level or maybe they haven't checked the level with the system depressurized, who knows? But anyhow, and just before I started sucking out the old fluid, I went and rechecked that the system was depressurized. I went into the same procedure that we looked at earlier and it wouldn't go ahead because it said the pressure was now at zero. So that residual one bar that was in the system when we first depressurized it, that's obviously ebbed away. So the system is at zero bar. So all the fluid should have been in there. It wasn't quite as high as I would have liked to have seen. So obviously that previous level wasn't uh, quite right. But anyway, we're gonna refill the system now. We're gonna get it to the correct level and then we'll get the whole thing buttoned up again. And make sure the hose is nice and clean before you start because you don't want to introduce any foreign matter into the bottle of the new fluid. So we're going to continue filling till we see the new fluid dribbling out the opening there. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a nice dribble of fresh fluid coming out there now. So we're right at the bottom of that fill hole where the level is. So now we can reinstall the fill plug. Like I say, when it comes to tightening up, you barely want to you're giving it any torque all we're doing is compressing that little rubber seal if you go too mad you're going to wreck the plug 
so it's currently finger tight I'm just going to give it just a tiny bit that's it just I can just about feel a little bit of resistance so that's enough it's not holding any pressure all it's doing is stopping any fluid from spilling out if the fluid sloshing around there right so now we've made a bit of a mess here so we'll clean that up before we put the under tray back on what I'm gonna do is give it a blast with some uh, brake clean as well just so it doesn't start attracting dirt and get a buildup of muck and road grime Right, so there we go, that's everything nice and clean. Right, so now that that's the fluid fill completed, I've refitted the under tray there, I re-secured it back in position. Right, so next job, we're gonna drop the car back down onto its wheels. So that's the car back down on all four wheels now. So now we can refit the SMG pump relay. And refit the lid to the fuse box there. Back on with the microfilter tray. Back on with the weather strip. Clip the centre retaining piece back in position. A rubber seal at the end of the tray here. Now we can reposition the microfilter and the lid. Okay, so that's everything all back together now. So the next step. We're going to carry out the repressurizing of the SMG system and then we're going to carry out the bleed procedure. Now you only really need to bleed the system if you've had some of the hydraulic components apart. Now all we've done is reduce that fluid level in the reservoir and refilled it, but there's always a chance that if that level's got to a really low level, it might have introduced a little bit of air into the hydraulic system. But just for the sake of it, we're going to carry out the bleed procedure and then that's going to make sure there's no chance of any air in the hydraulic system. Right, so let's grab the scan tool again and plug her in. So just before I plugged the scan tool in here, when I opened the door to enter the vehicle, obviously that SMG pump started, now I've got the relay connected, so it ran a couple of times. It didn't run for very long, but obviously it's just priming the system there, doing its thing, doing what it's supposed to do. Now then, let's take a look. So we've got our service, powertrain again, SMG transmission, service function, exchange and repair. We're going to select hydraulics again. So we'll go for the last option there after working on the hydraulic system and that's going to give us our bleed procedure. So we need to do this in a specific order. First we're going to bleed the actuator block and then following that we're going to bleed the clutch slave cylinder. So the actuator block first, making it doing its thing there. Now to bleed the valve block this takes about 15 minutes then when we move on to the clutch system that takes about 4 minutes. Right, so that's the actuator block finished. We'll now move on to the clutch slave cylinder. You can hear that clutch pumping away there. So like I say, this process takes about four minutes and then we're all done. All right guys, so that's the bleed procedure now completed. All right, so if we take a look here, that's the old fluid that we sucked out of the SMG hydraulic system. And if we take some of our new fluid, pour it in here. You can see, Quite a difference there, so definitely worth changing that fluid today. I have no idea how old this fluid is, it could be the original fluid that it left the factory with. I imagine that the car's had some work on the SMG at some point, like I say the car's nearly 20 years old now. Who knows, but it's certainly worth getting that job done today. Alright guys, I hope this video helped you guys out. If you found the video interesting or useful, 
don't forget to give it a like and make sure you go and check out the rest of my YouTube channel for more BMW E60 M5 DIY content. Consider subscribing if that's your cup of tea. I'm M Tech Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.